going to be only one hour today because we, I, I have a meeting and I cannot move it, so it's uh, complicated. But on the other hand, the good news is that is, we're not going to talk about Poisson geometry, so this will make everyone happier. We are finished. Because I was thinking about the Stefano. Eh? We are finished with Poisson geometry. We are not finished with Poisson geometry, but since uh, it's me, the speaker, I decided to go in an order which I like. Okay. No, because, uh, so, last time we were talking about the Poisson uh, uh, manifolds, then we talked about the Poisson groups. We developed a lot of definitions, and we arrived to the uh, concept of Libai algebra, okay? So we, we showed that uh, you have a Poisson, a Lie Poisson group, if and only if the Lie algebra is the Bay algebra, whatever that is. But this is what we ended uh, yesterday. Now, in order to have interesting examples, we need to start a different path. We will develop a different theory, and we arrive to examples, and then we go back to Poisson. So, Stefano, you will have to study Poisson geometry. And so, the, the, later, the, the latest, the better. Okay. I think that uh, most of us know what is Grassmannian and flag, right? <laughs> Not all of us, so I better uh, maybe redo the definition and explain a little bit because it's only fair and then the terminology and everything, okay? So let's talk about the Grassmannian. So we start with the Grassmannian first. So we fix a, a certain space. I think he likes to be. You, you have his notes, Martha, that I very bad. I did that at home uh, all the time. No, he fixes. Okay, he fixes a field. So f is a field. One to think f of c. He wants to be generic, and it, it doesn't really make a difference if we take a complex field or any field. Then uh, we define uh, the uh, Grassmannian. In case no difference, we don't see the shape. But not shape, but let's take C. It's OK. But what I'm saying, OK, let's take the complex field, and then I will make a remark when we're finished saying why it is uh, easy to generalize, OK? Uh, so I use this. Uh, so the Grassmannian of R spaces into the n-dimensional as a set is the set of W inside the CM M with the dimension of W equal R. Okay? So I'm looking at all the subspaces that have a certain fixed dimension inside a m-dimensional complex vector space, CM. So it's very concrete. Now, we know already uh, this, uh, I, I mean, I, I know this everything, but uh, elementary geometry gives an example of this. For example, the uh, G1M, these are all the lines in CM through the origin, right? And this uh, is identified, right, with the projective space. So I'm telling that in the special case, this is uh, PM, PM minus one. Okay. So this, this uh, to tell you that we have already encountered this uh, in, a, in a simple uh, geometry course. So I want to give to this uh, GRM a structure of uh, algebraic variety, more in No, you're not happy, Marta? PM minus one. So if I'm looking at the lines in C2, this would be the projective oh, line, right? So you put down by the one dimension. That's a matrix. Really silly, whatever else. So it's... Uh... <clears throat> so what I want to do is to identify this set with a closed subset of uh, some projective space, so to give a, a, an, an embedding and to give a 
in algebraic variety structure. Now I want to spend just a minute. So this is a set and one would like to give the structure of algebraic variety independently from the embedding, okay? So what I will do is this, I embed this now into some PN and I identify this with a closed subset here so it will acquire the structure of projective variety. This is what I'm going to do. But there is uh, one objection saying, oh, but uh, this uh, could have a structure which is independent from the embedding. I don't know if you understand this. I mean, it's, it's nice to have a canonical structure on this. And what I'm telling you is that yes, uh, we could give a canonical structure, but I prefer to go this way because it's easier. And also it is the way that it goes. And then I think it will use this embedding. So for this reason, let's go through this uh, example, OK? So uh, he gives this embedding, but let me do a, an example, a special example, uh, because the general is the same. So let's look at uh, the G2, 4. Hmm? Why am I choosing G2, 4? Because this is the first example where there is something uh, non-trivial. Because otherwise, uh, if you if you take m equal three, you have only two choices: spaces of dimension one and this projective space, space of dimension two and is the dual projective space. So it is uh, all of uh, projective. So the first non-trivial example where something happens is four. You understand? We need to go a bit up with the dimension. It doesn't matter. So G to 4, so these are the W inside the C4 with dimension of W equal to, okay, oh, there is the usual problem, right? See, I put the line and then I ignore it. I like this. <laughs> so Marco, can you see? Okay. Now, uh, how do we identify is, am I saying something which is very trivial to everyone? This uh, is good uh, if I say it because, okay. So what is, what is W, so how you identify a, a subspace in C4? Okay, me and them have different <coughs> perspectives on this, but uh, unfortunately I try to do what they do, but I cannot. So this is the span, so it is the span of two vectors. Ah, sorry, because I'm, I'm doing the class. It depends on you if you like the vector to be columns or rows. He likes rows, I like columns. Let's do columns. Eh? I know it's a simple question, but unfortunately then the formulas will come different, but it doesn't matter. I mean. Okay, now, so this is say W11, W1N, see I write rows. Let's, let's be 4, 1, W12, W42. Except that if you want to do such identification of your Gassmannian, because see, one naive point of view would be, okay, great, a, an element of the Grassmannian is this object. But this would be wrong, because this aspect has to be identified with a change of basis. You have to allow for a change of basis. Because you could have two, two of these things could be equivalent just by choosing a different basis of this subspace, right? So it is not one to one. So you have to allow by the action of some GL2, and the action, if you write the columns, the action will come on the right. If you write rows, it will come on the left. Okay, whatever. Now, uh, it is pretty clear from lin linear algebra, elementary linear algebra, that there is a transitive uh, action of, uh, uh, okay, so GL4C acts on uh, G24. What is this action? Let's put it in here. 
What is this action? This action is uh, you take an element, right? Um, so G times <coughs> what is it? And it's pretty clear that uh, this action is independent from the basis that you choose, right? So if you take a different basis, uh, you will end up uh, in the same uh, space. This is clear, right? This fact. Hopefully. Okay. Then, uh, uh, and this action is transitive. Uh, this uh, you will have to prove, but uh, it's very understandable that any uh, sub two dimensional space can be moved into any other two dimensional space in C4. So uh, we are looking at the action of this. So this will be the set of all your spaces since it is transitive. So what I'm trying to do now is to give coordinates to this. So, uh, <clears throat> so what you do, you identify a space with this wedge product in order to give coordinates. So this is uh, W1 wedge W2. Eh? G is in G and No, no, G is in G and 4. Okay, no, it's very important. There are two actions. There is one action from the right, which is the change of basis, and one action from the left, which is the one. No, it's very important because it doesn't mention anything in the, in the, the thing, forgets about this. And it's very important because otherwise, this identification is wrong if you don't have this action. So if you act on the wedge, The idea is that I want to give coordinates. So a subspace you can identify to the, with a wedge. So if you get the two vectors, you do the wedge, you sort of encode the information of the vectors, right? The wedge is the tensor product. The wedge is the, what is usually the wedge? Alternating product. Right. It's the, I don't know, Stefan. You are a differential geometer. I am and give a <coughs> You want the definition of wedge? No. no. You know this wedge too. It's the tensor product C4. I know. It? Wait. What I'm saying is that, yes, so for a, a subspace, it's obvious that you can uniquely write this. Hmm? If you have a subspace, this is this, right? Right. And you can write this. No, if you, have a sub, if you have a sub, that, that's not unique. No, no. It's an orbit. Right. So I want... No, no, I want to... Let me finish. Fix a subspace and the basis, you write this. What I'm saying is that if you, you have a very good request that says, okay, suppose I fix a basis, I do this. What if I change the basis here? Do I get the same thing here? You get it multiplied by a constant, okay? I was going to say it in a moment, you, uh, because he asked me a question on the wedge and I could not say this. Okay. So, so up to a constant, this, this is not trivial, it's, but it's a calculation. So let me write this observation. <coughs> this is not a generic element in the wedge, oh, okay? This is a special element because the generic element will be a sum of things done like this. These are called decomposable elements. Okay, it doesn't matter. So, uh, what I was going to say. So the observation coming from Martha's question is the following, that the correspondence between elements in the Grassmannian, in the Grassmannian G24 and uh, this W1, W2 is a correspondence up to a constant. 
What do I mean? I mean if you change the basis, so if you do the action, the left action of GL2, C, you multiply by a constant. Okay? This, this is a calculation. You're not happy. What is this constant? What is the constant? It will be it will be a determinant. Yes, the determinant of GL. GL2 a destra, GL2 on the right, GL4 on the left. Left, right. I I wonderful. This right. Yes. This right action. No, but this is good. I'm going to see what's going on in the Eh? È buono questo casino, almeno si controlla ogni riga. Ogni riga? Sì, in che senso? Che non ti dica castro di riga. Ah, ma io lo dico sicuro, cioè, it's for sure that I'm saying the wrong things. Perché poi non c'è Fabrizio, perché sennò... Eh, no, ma Fabrizio will be... There will be a test for Fabrizio when he comes back. Ok, so... The next, I, want, I mean, he doesn't say anything of all of this, so... Now let's look at this orbit. What is this? This is uh, clearly the... If I want to express it in the wedge, so this wedge is the span, of course, over C of EI wedge EJ with I less than J, right? This is the wedge C4 wedge C4. So if I want to express this in terms of this basis, so I will get, uh, what do I get? I get the determinant, uh, so this will be, will be this, right? G11, G21, G41, wedge. So it will be this. If I want to rewrite this in terms of the, of of the entries of this matrix, I will get the, so the, the one multiplying the E1 where G2 will be the determinant. It's pretty clear this. It's a little calculation that you should do, it's very simple. Plus D13, E1 where G3, and so on, up to right to D34, E3, E4. So this suggests the coordinates for our embedding, okay? This is, this is a suggestion, right? So, W, so the Grassmannian, this is all, I would say, I, I need to fix a basis to produce this embedding. So the W is the wedge W1, W2, but if I read it in coordinates, so first of all, the transitivity gives me all the Grassmannian. Then to some W, which is uh, G, E1, E2, I associate this. And this is well defined because of the observation that Marta was asking. Because if I decide to change the basis of my W, so if I act from the right by GL2, this will be multiplied by a constant. So it will be an element in the projective. So like, uh, you, you understand? So change of basis. Uh, so here. Multiplication by constant. Because you have to show it is well defined. That is the problem, right? That if you choose different bases, you want to make sure that it is the same point here. What is it? D12, D13 are determinant of the of the rules. This, this matrix, the, this the minus. Uh, the minus. Of the minus. From this, of that matrix. Okay. So this will be yes. no 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 no. Let's write it. This uh, yeah. in any case, the, the, the important thing is that only the first two rows of G are in the 
Ah, because, no, because of the trans no, but this is a totally personal choice because you could have just yeah. E3, E4. It would be the same, it would be the other rows, it doesn't matter. But you have to make a choice to that they're learning. So it is pretty clear for your discussion that you have to so it is pretty clear following this picture that if you have a GR M, what will be? So GR M will go to P wedge R C M and the coordinates will be D1 R and then will be D and then will be 1 uh, and then you do R plus 1 so you skip R minus 1, R plus 1 and so on, right? It's the same uh, thing that you have to do. So instead of having G, E1, E2, you will have the G, E1, ER. Yeah. It will be the same. What I'm saying is that the example of G24 is replicated immediately, generalizing it to GRM. OK? So this. Uh, uh, you can show, it's not difficult, that uh, uh, two subspaces are the same, so it's injective. If and only if these coordinates are the same, but the way we constructed it is very believable, right? The way we have built this map that is injective. Not do some... Uh... Now, I promise that this would be a closed set. So there is a question that you have to answer, and the question is the following. So you do di 
where you substitute the index i alpha with the index j beta, and then you do dj, where you substitute j beta with i alpha. And uh, uh, yes, and so you pick two indices. So here, this is what we did, right? So we did the two four. So we leave them as they are, and then we substitute with three four. Let's see what we did here. No, sorry. Uh, he, he has all, all positive hmm? in the cycle. So if what, what? d one three d two four expressed in terms of the the, two, the other two. This is good, and I I will use it in the next talk. So I don't get it. What you're saying? Okay. I is one three. And j is 2, 4. i is 1, 3. So you pick the indices. And j is No, you cannot express 1, 3 and 2, 4. That's wrong. It, it, yes, it will express g, 1, 4 and 2, 3. I'm sure this is supposed to be used. It's uh, OK. Well, no, because. OK, OK. Because Let's write this example. On the right hand side, there are all, so, it is a sum of all positive. Right. Okay, so it, uh, I see, I see that part. So he says, she says uh, how to recognize this form in what we have written. So we recognize this form because, so it is D13, D24. So this will be, <clears throat> we exchange, uh, no, so I made a mistake. I, uh, sorry, I and J is 1, 3. So we uh, substitute uh, right three with two and then three with four. So it is coming D. Uh, uh, so let's write it as it does. So I alpha for him is uh, three substituted with four, not with two. D. Uh, 2, 4, and then uh, 2 substituted with 3, okay? So we get uh, this thing becomes a 1, 2, and this becomes a 3, 4, plus uh, <clears throat> 1, 3 substituted with uh, um, 4, and 3, uh, yes. <clears throat> and this becomes one four and this becomes two three. Okay? <clears throat> we were trying to see how this relation translates to this one. And we don't substitute three with three because no, and no we substitute three with one because otherwise the one one is zero. Okay, so we, okay? That's the way he writes it. Okay. Great. And uh, so this is the general. So for the G24, uh, how do you know they're all? Okay. It's very, it doesn't mention anything, but it costs uh, a lot to, to prove they're all. It's not uh, cheap to prove these are all the relations. It is in Fulton, if you want to know. Suppose that you want to know. Uh, all the relation. So I wrote it uh, in the book of Fulton called Young Tableaus. You can see there is a proof uh, that he writes the relations and proof these are all of the relations. The strategy for proving that they are all it is to write uh, one of these elements in terms of the other. Uh, but uh, you don't choose this. So it's very unpleasant. Because he writes uh, these elements like this. <coughs> one, two, three, four makes a tableau, right? One, three, two, four. And then one, four, two, three. 
And then the tableau to eliminate is this one because these are all ordered, both with row and both with columns. See? This is one, two, one, three. Why are you do, doing like this? Because this is the problem I will have in, like, in the next lecture that I don't understand. But okay. No, no, I'm explaining now. I'm explaining. So, the blue correlation will allow us to get rid of those tableaus that are not ordered. So, I write this as rows, see? One, two, three, four, and so on. Notice that there is one of the three that is different from the other, this one, because these are ordered, see? There's Nicolò that likes combinatorics, so you should like this very much. So one, four, two, three, but see there is four, three. So this one is the one that is bad, because it's not ordered. But look, the relation will allow us to express this one in terms of the other two. And the strategy of the proof is this one, to say every Pluger relation will allow us to express the non-ordered one in terms of the ordered one. And then we have an argument to prove the ordered one uh, that, that form a basis for the ring. So you, you do have no relations among them. This is this, this called the straightening algorithm. It is not something that you can improvise now. It's a long algorithm. It takes a long effort to prove this. Okay? So if you don't understand, there is a reason. No, I, I have a question, but I don't know if you know. Have you ever seen it in terms of crossing? This is what, I mean, we, we saw it, I saw yes. it. You, you showed it to us in, in, in last year. In our years. life, yes. In our spirit. but uh, now the text uh, uses another notation. And yes. what he says is that uh, D13, D24 mm -hmm. is crossing monomial because it's what? Crossed. Ah, there is uh, intertwining. Yes. The yes. And so that's the bad one. And that's the yes. one he wants to eliminate. Yes. So it's another point of view. It's another he point does of not view. eliminate the last no, one. No, I, I respect that. No, I'm of telling course. you how it is proven by Fulton. Yes. No, and <clears throat> I, w I was asking you if you know. I know because I worked on intertwining order. You know, if yes. you have a place, where, a reference where I can find My it under thesis. that point of view. My thesis. Under that point of view. But it's not a good reference. <laughs> no, I'm joking, but it's very important that how, how intertwined they are. The more intertwined, the worse they are. Yes, because in the, in the following chapter, he will, use, he will eliminate the other ones. And so. No, okay. It depends on the purpose that you have, of course. Of course. Of course. I mean, depending on what you want to do. Okay. <clears throat> but do we have a sort of an idea on how the Grassmannian works? I didn't prove anything. So, but at least I gave the Pluker embedding and... Uh, eh? It's okay. We have time. Mm -hmm. It's cruel. <laughs> now what is the flag? So the flag is, uh, a, is worse because... Uh, so the flag... So the flag variety. So instead of looking at uh, the Grassmannian was the R dimensional spaces in CM, you're looking at more. So you're looking, uh, so let me write the flag like this. So you're looking at, uh, so you have uh, zero and then you have uh, W1, sorry, W1 and then W2. W n minus one. So you have V C N M we decided. Well the dimension of your W I is equal to I. So this is called the full flag. So for each integer between zero and n m, sorry, you consider all the possible subspaces. Now it's pretty clear that this thing lies inside G of 1M times G of 2M. <coughs> this is obvious because uh, you are looking at all the possible one-dimensional space, the two-dimensional space and so on. 
but uh, sorry, it's inside, but it's certainly not equal because you're not looking just at this, but you have this uh, condition. One is inside the other, right? And by the way, this will tell you immediately that uh, you lie into some projective space, okay? Because each of them is in a projective and then you are in the product of projective spaces, so it is certainly projective. Now, you have to show that this flag is a, is a close, the subset of this PN. Now, the question can be reformulated as follows. So here you have the determinants di, will give you the embedding here, and then here you have determinants dij. So this is the determinants taking the first column, the first two columns, and then you have dijk. So you have all of these determinants, each for e, each determinant for a different gas value. So you have coordinates, so these are the coordinates here, and then you have coordinates like 1 and 2 here, and then you, have, you realize all of these coordinates. So the question is, what are the relations among different determinants of different order? You see the question. So here we were asking, what are the relations among the determinants of the minors of same order? Now the question is, what are all the possible relations among the determinants of different order? So the flag embeds into this, and the coordinates will be these coordinates for this G1, and then this coordinate for G2, and so on. The answer is that the so-called incidence relation. Why are they called incidence? Because they will tell you that one is inside the other, essentially. <clears throat> they have a, what is the aspect that they have? Wait, did I write them? He does not write them, but you can write. Uh, uh, I, I forget. It's in full form. For example, I wrote one for the flag in C4, just to give you a feeling on how they look like. Just so one knows what is the... For example, if you look at the flag, say, inside the C4, so you will have coordinates, uh, so the, so this flag will embed into some PN, so you take uh, 0, W1, W2, W3, where does this go? It goes to PI, DIJ, DIJK. So what are the coordinates? Will be D1, D2, D3, D4. So this will be really G11, G12, no, G21. So the element of the first order will be D12, D13, D34. This is the Grassmannian. So this is it. And then it will be D123. Now this is really, I should write like this because D234. What are the relation? The relation one of them, there are many. D1, 2, 3, D4, and then 1, 2, 4, D3, plus D1, 3, 4, D2. I took it from my thesis, this one. So. This is one of them. There are many. I can write the general formula is ugly. Because each of, so, these are in no relations because, this one, I forget, I default. This is not too bad. Not too bad? No, it's not. They're all like this. They're all like this. They're all, all quadratic, and uh, they, you put the missing one. So it's something like this. It's full to write them. I forget to write them, okay? Now, and I... You, and you have the, the relation? Eh? And you have uh, certainly the blucher. So there will be a blucher relation here. Between, uh, the there is no relation here because it's projective space and no relation there because it's projective. Then there are the only blucher here and then incidence. 
There's not only this disease, there's also the this and that. I don't remember that. Uh, I wrote just one to have a feeling of how they look like. Uh, I'm not sure how much time I have because I have to go. <coughs> So yes, uh, next time it will be a, a little continuation. Maybe I, I, no, because you need the transversal concept, do you? Transversal? No, I don't think so. I mean, not, not. Uh, you don't need. Not, 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 not the chapter two. Yes. Okay. So I just want to say, uh, maybe a little thing. So the next time I, I start from uh, scratch. Okay. So he says uh, a little definition. When two flags are called transversal, so the elements of the flag are called flags. So this thing is a flag. So two flags are transversal if the dimension of, uh, say, wi intersect wj tilde, because it's a different flag, so say one flag is W1 instead W2 and so on, the other is W1 prime and so on, is equal to the maximum between I plus J minus N and zero. This is just a definition. So for example, if you look at the flag, so look at the flag, say E1, E1, B2. This, are, this is called the standard flag because you take the canonical basis. So this is one flag. So flag one. Then you take flag two. For example, E4, E3, E4, E2, E3, E4. These are two elements of the flag space because this is one flag and this is another flag. And if you make the calculation, you see that these are transversal, these two. Okay? It is just a calculation. You compute, uh, so for example, if you do W1 intersect W1 prime, you get a zero. And in fact, I plus J, so look at this. So this is your W1, and this is your W1 prime. If you do the intersection of these two, we are in C4. Four. We are in C4. M is four. Mm? M. M is four. So you have one plus one minus four. So it makes minus two. And so the maximum is zero. In fact, the intersection between this is zero. It's just the point. And if you try to do, for example, the same thing here. So the measure is two plus one is three minus four. It's minus one. The intersection is zero and so on. So do all the possible to see these are transverse. Okay. So this is just a concept that it needs. Uh, so they sort of intersect like this. They don't have in common, things in common. But uh, okay. And then uh, the fact that the flag and the Grassmannia are quotients of groups uh, it just says it. But I don't know. Once. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure it is useful, but uh, I don't have the time. Ultimo col primo. So, E1, so it is dimension 3 plus 1, 4, minus 4, 0, 0, and 0 intersection. No, 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 Sì, sì, allora, no, E1, 2, 4, l'ultimo di F1 con il primo di F2. Ah, perché ho sbagliato! Thank you. No, I wanted, no, it's the, so this is the complementary flag, right? Okay, so, and for each basis you can write one like this. He's interested in those. But Marta doesn't need them. Do you need them? No. Those. No. Okay. That is enough, I give the definition, and next time I do, next time is a smaller review of Nicoletta's class, Algebra Superiore. The algebras, yes. So in uh, one hour I do all the classification and they come back. <coughs> How to get uh, the algebra from the thinking diagram. 
which is something that you will not do in the class, will you? In one hour. Uh, even less. <laughs> <laughs> will you do that now to that the algebra from the day? I don't believe it. Not for a second that you do it. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> okay. Not in one hour.